What can you see, Bob? Uh, I can see where an animal's been in there um, from the nesting material being disturbed, but there's nothing there at the moment. Hey, Bob, <laughs> you've got a leech oh, on Oh, yes, you. I have too. Oh, my gosh, he's a feisty one. They itch for ages. Yes. No, no, I hate them. I'm going to stand on rock. I feel safe up here. No, I'm going to put him back on the... Yeah, look, honestly, if you use salt to get rid of a leech, that's sort of like using napalm to get rid of mosquitoes. Yeah. Probably a bit of overkill. Well, they're part of nature. Yes. So there he goes. A hungry part of nature. Yeah, we're paranoid. <laughs> yeah, well, spandicoots and things digging here, so... EnviroTubes looked at the wildfire garden before and we sort of concentrated on insects and birds because they're the easy thing. But with Bob we're actually looking at the marsupials and they're interesting. Uh, what we have here is some evidence of a bandicoot. You can sort of see this hole here. It's actually a hole made by a bandicoot looking for insects generally. Now where you have wildlife you have ticks. So we've got pygmy possums, we've got bandicoot and <laughs> we just discovered the leech. There's a lot of wildlife here. If you're not all of the wildlife that you want but there's a lot of wildlife here the bushland seems relatively quiet and empty. Once the lights go out, there's a lot of activity. All these little animals that you don't know exist, they're scurrying away, they're nocturnal, but they're there. Bob Jones has a passion for eastern pygmy possums. They're a fantastic little animal, and when the young get older, you see them actually riding on their mother's back. But of course, when you put a camera near a nesting box and food plants, you don't just see eastern pygmy possums, but you see all these other marsupials. You see antichinas, you see sugar gliders, and sometimes you even see bush rats. You find them all, and these cameras have picked up the lot. Not only do we see other marsupials when we turn the cameras on, but occasionally we see predators, and we're very lucky to have caught an image of a goanna trying to rustle into a eastern pygmy possum box. Honestly, if the pygmy possum boxes weren't secure, I think that goanna might have had a really good meal. So it's not just birds and insects, there's a whole pantheon of wildlife. Just a little bit hard to find. Now Bob, this is a rare and endangered plant community, isn't it? This is a coastal upland swamp. There's two very, very nice big ones in, in Karingai, and this is very rare, an endangered ecosystem. Why is it rare? Um, basically because people have drained them. Uh, they've built on them. There's not much to clear. What people used to think of these areas with the swamps was to fill them with garbage, basically, uh, make them tips, and then make a playing field on them. And we quite often find a bit of remnant left next to an oval, for example. If we're very lucky in the wildflower garden, enough has been preserved to act as a, as a suitable habitat still. Now this is perfect pygmy possum habitat. Absolutely perfect, because you've got lots of food material. You've got banksias, a number of banksias here, but mostly the banksia erisifolia. You've got the swamp tea tree. This has lovely pink flowers. You can see they've all been fertilized. They've all been pollinated, possibly by a pygmy possum or, or a bird or a honey eating bird. You can see the seed pods here that have developed from last season's pollination. Well, one event. of the things about this plant community is it's not just an isolated little pocket. There's basically bushland running for tens of kilometers north. So in in fact, not only is it perfect pygmy possum habitat, but it means that if a predator comes in and wipes out the local pygmy possum uh, population, which is quite likely to happen, pygmy possums from surrounding areas can move in. So that's your theory, isn't it, Bob, yes, as to why yeah. we're not finding them yes, in yeah. urban areas? The idea is that the pygmy possums we have here, some of them colonise this area from the national park. We've photographed foxes in this area, and we also know from their scat that pygmy possums are, are on the diet. And we also find um, owls, native predators, and goannas that have eaten pygmy possums. Well, let's face it, everything eats pygmy possums, and yeah. that's fine. The thing is, you need big areas of bushland so yeah. that if a population gets hammered, yeah. they can move in from another area. Yeah, so this is connected with Kringai Chase National Park, and that is a large area, and we need to keep that area to act as a reservoir for the population. Previously, we've done a video where we didn't find any pygmy possums. The problem is that a highway or a four-lane road dividing it up from a big intact area of bushland, that's enough to stop the pygmy possums from recolonizing. So when you get foxes, fire, dogs, cats, whatever, killing the pygmy possums, they're not able to repopulate the area. That's why these really large intact areas are critical. And also proper corridors. It's not enough to plant a couple of trees and call it a corridor. 
you really got to start doing what the Europeans and the Americans do, actually do massive overpasses. I mean, I'm talking millions of dollars and probably, does anyone care enough about pygmy possums to spend millions of dollars? But that's the sort of thing that you need to do to make a real corridor. Got to make it so that these little creatures can actually move from area to area.